um, today's session is strategic donor engagement in the short term for long term success. And I'm with my colleague Betsy Rigby. And we have put together a session um, to describe or to with some thoughts on different perspectives of um, communications that we've seen and what's worked and what's and and where we thought that things could be applied to other organizations across the, the country. So just as a quick reminder <coughs> or an introduction for myself, um, I, again, I'm Sean Vogan. I have been in um, fundraising for the past 20 or so years, working in a variety of different roles from corporate and foundation relations to uh, alumni development, alumni engagement, health sciences communication, and outreach, as well as uh, major gift, grateful patient programs, and principal gift um, outreach. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Betsy, to get us started and um, introduce herself. So, Betsy? Thank you so much, Sean. Pleasure to be with you. I, I mean, virtually, I would love to be actually with you, but thank you for joining us on this webinar this afternoon. Uh, I'm Betsy Rigby. I am Associate Vice President at Ben Smiley Plessner. I've been in fundraising my whole career, about 30 years. I've spent about half of that time on the front line uh, with fundraising revenue responsibilities and about half the time uh, in development operations uh, in the Boston area. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be with you today. So I'm going to get us started on our content. And we wanted to start with some good news, the philanthropy edition, uh, because there is good news to share. We are fortunate to be in a field that is on the front line of generosity. COVID-19 is definitely having a significant impact on philanthropy, and in turn, philanthropy is having a significant impact on COVID-19 relief efforts. Funds are supporting relief, community health, food access, education, student relief, uh, student support, workforce development, across the board. We're seeing great outpouring of support in these troubled times. And philanthropy continues outside of COVID-19. Uh, a client of ours shared the great news that they received a significant eight-figure gift uh, for an arts center. Uh, so there's philanthropy within and without the COVID-19 relief efforts. Still, you know, I, I want to acknowledge not all the news is, is, is so cheery. Uh, and charities do anticipate a downturn. A recent survey by BBY's Giving Alliances Give.org surveyed 118 charities and over 1,000 adults. They found that 80% of charities do anticipate reduced revenue uh, in 2020, lower than what they had forecasted, largely as a result of the reduced capacity of donors to give, but also because, of course, many have had to cancel fundraising events where they expected part of their revenue to come from. And they're also anticipating donors to redirect their support. Although the, some of the good news, uh, more than half of the donors surveyed, 52% uh, expect to give the same, not less, than they did last year. And another 30% of donors anticipate giving more. Uh, so as always, uh, good news and bad news. When we take the long view, it's important to remember that philanthropy is remarkably resilient. Uh, and yes, over the course of time, it does uh, reflect current economic conditions, but with time, it does come back. And we expect philanthropy uh, will come back this time as well. In fact, it's important to remember some of the lessons learned from previous economic events. Take the long view, uh, the economy comes back unevenly, but eventually. Organizations that stay focused on philanthropy saw the biggest returns on that investment. So now is not the time to be turning away from fundraising. As we've noted, donors are generous. Uh, they were generous before the pandemic. They're generous during the pandemic and they will continue to be generous on the other side of this. So uh, our organizations were important. Uh, similarly, they are important now and they will remain important in the future. Uh, the world does need our organizations. So while it's important to remain focused on philanthropy, uh, within philanthropy, our focus must necessarily shift. And that shift should focus, of course, and be informed by what we are hearing from our donors. One back, Sean, thank you. Uh, the uncertainty that they feel 
uh, we feel it, they feel it, uh, we, we share that. It's unlikely to be a good time in many donors' minds to talk about a gift that doesn't relate to COVID-19 relief efforts. Donors generally perceive this would be a challenging time to launch a campaign related to, unrelated to COVID-19. At the same time, though, donors indicate they want to hear from their organizations to know that they're okay, hear how they're addressing the challenge, and hear how they're continuing. So we do need to keep them updated and engaged. In the short term, many organizations have pivoted quickly and set up funds to support relief efforts, and they've seen remarkably generous responses from, in a, from donors. This unexpected time has provided the opportunity to personally reach out to donors. Many uh, organizations are doing that by phone, by video. Of course, our donors are likely to be home uh, and a little perhaps more reachable than before. But if donors aren't reachable, don't forget the power of a handwritten note. Uh, it's important to reach out to donors with empathy when we can hear how they're doing first and then share how the organization is doing. If they are experiencing or indicate any kind of financial distress, it might be a time to consider extending or reconfiguring their pledge payments just to provide them some relief. Uh, but as we step into our second month in this world that has been put on pause in a world that remains unsettled with many unknowns, how do we maintain strategic engagement of our donors? We're in a point of transitioning from an immediate response to a longer term response. So of course we need to have a plan. You likely had a fundraising plan and it's being adapted to these times. Retention, cultivation, stewardship overlap. So make sure it's a coordinated plan. Make use of existing assets and collateral, existing articles, videos, stories. As you bring all of this to your donors, as you engage with donors, we want to make sure you focus on your mission you communicate your impact, and you take the opportunity to innovate. Sean and I are going to take you through some, a series of examples of how some organizations are doing just that. The ideas we are presenting are a small, small sample of wonderful approaches that organizations are taking in these challenging times. We invite you to think about how the ideas we're going to identify in the different examples we're sharing with you could be tailored to your organization, to your mission, to your impact, and help you set up for success in the long term. And we would love to hear from you. So we would invite you to send your examples, uh, emailing your outreach efforts to us, the same email at the start of the webinar, bwf at bwf.com. In a couple of days, we will have them collected and posted on that same part of our website. Un, uh, under COVID-19 resources, you'll see this webinar posted, the recording of it, the deck of it, and then we'll also include examples that you share with us. So we'll look forward to hearing from you. But Sean, I'll turn it over to you to get us started. Great, thank you, Betsy. And again, these are just a small sampling of many, many, many wonderful things that our organizations are doing across the country to support the efforts and to support your organizations. And I just wanna reiterate again, if you have great ideas that you're willing to share, please do email those to the BWF at bwf.com email to, to, for us to kind of gather those together and provide additional resources for those of you who have joined our call today. So just to get started, um, Betsy mentioned the three different areas that we're gonna focus our efforts on today. And first is in the, in the area of focused on your mission. So uh, a good example that we've seen is with some friends of ours up at North Shore University Health System uh, in Chicago. The North Shore is a five hospital system serving the Chicago metropolitan area. And they, were, um, th they put together this piece, it's actually a two page piece uh, that provides information on North Shore's response to COVID-19 um, and the pandemic, including efforts to develop its own test. So this was done early on in, in the um, pandemic when testing was not um, available at all. And they went ahead and put together their own type of um, test for their um, patients and for the community. They, in this um, piece, they sent this out by email to their donor base asking for support to the response. 
The second page, which I couldn't show you, so my apologies on that, also outlines where North Shore is directing its resources. So it's very clear and concise on the fact that their, their needs are for the testing, the staffing, and other buying other supplies. In addition, they also provided good background on how they are preparing their immediate care locations, their hospitals, and setting up dedicated phone lines as a resource for their patient, for their, for the community. So in the call to action that they had, they um, talk about um, asking them for folks to support the efforts. What we liked about this too is that it does com communicate right the, com the critical role that COVID-19 is, or, or the critical role that North Shore is playing in the COVID-19 response. And it provides a list of needs and very specifically how the money will be used and ways it, um, when, they, when folks make a gift. And it reinforces the commitment to the community. One piece of this that I was particularly struck by was the fact that they, they reference how their hospital was established in response to a typo fever um, outbreak um, back um, many, many years ago. And from then until now, they're out looking out for our community and helping out um, the patients. So as I mentioned, they did email this around to their donor base. And I heard earlier in the week that their response has been um, way more than they had even expected, where they've already raised more than a million dollars to support these offer, uh, um, efforts and offset the cost that the, the hospital has had to put into the COVID response. In addition, this now provides a great opportunity to follow up with, with um, the people who made a gift and expand their donor base and try to engage folks in the community to help them out. Next, now to pivot a little bit to one of our higher ed um, organizations, the Texas A&M Foundation. A colleague of ours received this email um, from the Texas Foundation folks. And it's an email that was sent out to about 2,000 members of their Plan Giving Society. And the email recognizes that they are likely at home, which we all are right now, and need something new to read. And so you may not be able to read this on the screen, but that foundation is, while we can't really go and visit you in person, we know that our thoughts are with you and the Aggie spirit is among us. So they're really pulling off of their alumni connection and that Aggie spirit. They, in the email, they offer a complimentary read from the university's press office. And the press had, um, in partnership with the Plan Giving Office, they identified six different titles that, were, that, could, that they had excess inventory of and they could offer to this um, very specific um, giving group. So by cl simply clicking on the mail me a book button down there at the bo bottom, folks could pick their own um, title and the press would mail it off to them uh, for them to read uh, at their leisure. And um, what the good news is that they had 600 requests for folks to do this. The challenge then is how to implement this in the days of sheltering in place. So university is dealing with that. Luckily, people are patient with us right now as, as we're dealing with all of our shelter at home um, situations. So it's really great stewardship and outreach to the Plan Giving Society. And then on top of that, the Plan Get, the, the, the university press folks add new, new members to their own list. So again, what we liked about this is really reinforces the educational mission of the Texas A&M um, group. It meets the current needs of their, their giving group and it recognizes the partnership between the donors and the institution. So rather than trying to get rid of t-shirts and other little things that you might have in your closet um, at, in the offices, this is a real way to provide a nice resource for your groups. We also think that this could be something that could be easily um, with a little creativity um, be rep repositioned for other types of organization or other parts of your audience. Um, and then again, it provides a follow-up opportunity for the gift officers. And then finally, <clears throat> Oklahoma State University, we, um, we really liked how they pivoted their landing page on their website for their cowboy family, Together We Can, and showcasing how the school is meeting the needs of the current students. Um, and they've created this page to offer uh, assistance um, and advice from campus experts and how to access help. It ends with the cowboy code, um, which is, we know challenges come with pain, but pain will not win. So that it really pulls back onto their alumni connections with the community. Um, again, reinforcing the mission through the COVID-19 filter, 
offers resources, including career services and other ideas that would be probably helpful down the road here and offers a choice for how folks want to get involved. And importantly, this was really a nice partnership between various, various parts of the university from the Alumni Association, the university as a whole, athletics and the foundation. Uh, so again, with a reminder of that cowboy code. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Betsy to walk through some pieces on impact. Thank you, Sean. So while we want you to continue to keep your mission upfront in all of your donor communications and engagement, we also want to encourage you to continue to communicate the impact of your organization. This is a uh, tweet from the Henry Ford Health System in Southwest Detroit. The system has six hospitals, 40 general medical centers, and nine emergency departments. They, of course, are now one of the epicenters, so we send our best wishes to our colleagues there. This is, as you can see, a very brief tweet. It starts with the words strong, courageous, determined, passionate. A few, but not nearly enough words to describe our hashtag healthcare heroes, like Martin, an ER nurse at Henry Ford Hospital, we will forever be grateful for our heroic team on the front line. It asks us to wear a white ribbon or make a donation to support our heroes. And it also gives a link to readers to access their resources, their frequently asked questions, and an assessment. It gives us uh, one of the Parts of this that we like so much is that it gives a call, a choice of the call to actions. There are two included in the tweet. One is to show us support by wearing a white ribbon. That's something we can probably all access while we're at home. And of course, uh, an opportunity to make a donation and support. It promotes, uh, uh, it's promoting the resources, making, it, making those available uh, that will reinforce its mission. And it personalizes the connection between the institution, its impact, and the community. We can't help but feel for Martin, who's on the front line. But it's also positive. It practically asks us to celebrate. Uh, it asks us to be grateful. It brings us to a on a very personal level to how the institution is having an impact. And we all have heroes at our institutions who deserve recognition and celebration. We also liked the work that Future Chefs did. Future Chefs is a very small organization in Boston focused on youth development. It trains youth in leadership and life skills while providing vocational training in the culinary arts and provides a year of support as high school students graduate and uh, transition into the workforce. With the pandemic, of course, they're unable to meet and continue in their training and development programs. So they, they have no connection to COVID-19, uh, but they sent this quick email to tell their supporters how they're still having an impact on their students, that they're staying in touch, connecting, oh, John, go back, sorry, um, connecting to them, uh, with making sure they are accessing available resources, that they're getting their paychecks, helping with shopping, other um, ways that they're connecting with their students, and most importantly, making sure the student understands that there is a caring adult reaching out to them during this time of isolation. So their message is we're ready to pivot when we need to meet the emerging needs of our students. So here they really have nothing to do with COVID-19, but they're communicating to their supporters the impact that they continue to have even while they're closed. It reinforces their mission, that they support their students. It's a consistent message of the organization. The message is very upbeat and positive. Supporters get to hear that the organization is still engaging their students, they're still at work, and they're still being successful. Switching to the arts, TheaterWorks is a professional theater in Silicon Valley, more than 50 years old. It found a creative way to deliver content digitally and continue to have an impact, continue to deliver on its mes message. Their email includes the phrase, our virtual stage and your ticket to exclusive content. So they're staying consistent in their messaging. The, this, is a, this email is a effectively a digest 
the um, resources they're making available, the events that they're making available, uh, and shares uh, the way that they are continuing to have an impact on their audience. So they are staying in touch with their audiences, moving their mission online, they're continuing to provide new content, expanding their impact in a way. They provide support. Um, I'm sorry, they, the, um, they provide a choice of content. They include a call to action with a link to, to donate. Uh, so we thought it was a nice piece representing many arts organizations that are moving their content online. So these are some examples of how organiz <clears throat> excuse me, of, of how organizations are continuing to communicate their impact, either on COVID-19 or despite COVID-19. Uh, back to Sean for some examples of three organizations making uh, great innovations at this time. Thank you, Betsy. And yeah, we thought we'd end with a, a little um, perspective on folks who are kind of provided different and unique innovative ways to share their message during this time. Again, in some of these cases, they're talking about impact, others are re reinforcing that mission that we've talked about. So it's a little bit of an overlap. So we really like this idea that Stony Brook University in New York had, and again, we reach out to our friends um, in the New York region who are really at the epicenter of all of these, um, all of the pandemic at the moment and wishing everyone as um, well. So um, this is an idea that actually sprung out of uh, students um, coming together to launch a social media campaign um, aimed at helping students and younger alumni through Twitter and Instagram. And so they started this before they were displaced and sent home, but under the theme, we're not together, but we can be together. Um, six students were hired by the university to an alternate every other day or every day to um, post something for folks to feel connected with each other and with the university as a whole. So this was launched after the students left campus and um, they, the, the, what we're showing here is um, some screenshots of the student um, on, the, on the left side there, the SBU Together campaign. He actually is an RA who stayed on campus to help with the few students that had no choice but to remain. And he um, sent out a post saying, what is your favorite study spot on uh, at Stony Brook? And then he took pictures of the responses and posted all of those. And this, um, so what we liked about it is that it's, you know, cultivating a demographic um, in advance of a very specific campaign. Um, it's reaching a younger audience through the social media platforms. And we, they're still trying to figure out how, what that campaign will look like now at, during this time. Um, but this was designed to, um, to be able to pivot in the right way um, once this is all done. And it really is an enforcing, it reinforces that community sense that they wanted to have. Importantly, that some of these do also include video um, posts, which are very powerful. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Next is a outreach by Gustavus Adolphus College, a small liberal arts college in Southern Minnesota. And again, a colleague of ours uh, received this and we liked it. And it's an email that was sent out to class officers, both current and former, asking them to record a video message um, to help the current students who are being, um, who were displaced and, and asked to leave campus. And so talking to them about these times and that they're still part of the Gusty family um, and how and they're, they're there for you and, and will be there for them when they, when they come back. Um, so that offer of support, I think is really a nice um, gesture for folks to make and a very easy way for them to do it through their own um, their own uh, mechanism to record by their phones or their computers or whatever they wanted to do and then post those to for all the students to see. So it serves both a, a dual purpose of both engaging the former um, class officers and current class officers and alumni and supporting the current students during this challenging time. Really brings in that sense of community again, provides a new opportunity for alumni involvement. And again, this video piece was really is really nice. There's some examples on their website um, that that they posted, um, and they're really nice, casual, and um, uh, uh, provide a real sense of community for for the folks. 
um, bringing some comfort to those who need it. And then finally, can't, we decided we better end with a little bit of the penguins. So I don't have the video to show here, but many of you have probably seen this and definitely is part of the some good news for sure. Um, Wellington the penguin was um, the shed aquarium folks in Chicago, let him out of his enclosure and had him wander around the museum um, looking at the different um, exhibits from the coral reef and the Amazon to meeting the sturgeon here that you see here in this screenshot from the video. Um, the shed tweeted this and posted it on Facebook um, so that they're bringing really bringing the museum right into people's homes and museums and the aquarium right into their homes. We've seen this in other places. Other museums have done that or um, zoos have also tried the same thing, but the penguins, of course, are super cute uh, and bring a smile to everyone, I think. So it allows the supporters to see what's going on, know that the animals are being taken care of, and it really subtly and reinforces the mission of, of the institution. I will note too that in, up in the captions, they did provide some um, comments about making sure you stay home and taking care during this time. So a little in, infomercial as well. So again, we liked how they're bringing the institution and mission into the homes. It's acknowledging the COVID-19 situation, but it's not all about COVID. And then the, the captions share some information about the animals and the care provided behind the scenes, it educates and informs. And so, and it, again, the engaging the audience through video. Um, some things that we've learned about the video, about videos in the recent time, and my, our colleague, Justin, um, who's part of um, BWF, he's, there's been some studies that are done that are suggesting that videos, um, folks who put in videos, 50% of folks who see videos from a nonprofit will go on to make a gift. And some, some are suggesting that may be up as high as 70 or, or so percent, which is really, really interesting to hear. And um, stay tuned as more and more folks use move to video to see how those numbers um, really play out. So with that, we're um, about a half an hour in here and we thought we'd just end with a little checklist. And if there's questions again, please use that Q&A section there. And we'll, we wanted to make sure that we could have as much discussion as possible in the in this conversation so um but as we're as you're writing your questions and we're looking at those just a quick little checklist if you will uh, for for you to think about as you're doing strategic outreach now and to try to engage your donors and, and constituents for long-term investment in your institution to deliver a consistent message to talk about the impact of supporting the COVID-19 relief efforts or, or moving forward and keeping you focused on the mission as Betsy described with the Future Chefs program. Engaging constituents using the digital outreach and how the importance of video to try to help through that. When possible, really put together that call to action. People are wanting to give. We are seeing a lot of, as Betsy said in the some good news section, people are giving, um, but that call to action can be giving or can be um, other ways that folks can give back to, to their alma mater, to the organizations in your community, or to your hospitals. Again, reinforce your commitment to the community, community that you serve, the community that you're in, uh, and your donor community. And offer donors a choice of ways to support and engage uh, with the institutions. So with that, we'll start getting some questions here. Um, and we will... Um, Seeing here, there's a question, Betsy, about um, the Stony Brook example. Um, yep. Are you seeing so, that? Yep. So that the question uh, and the as the Stony Brook University example, how did they balance the goal of engaging students and alumni while also ensuring student health and safety? So a little bit more on that campaign. It was actually launched after all the students had left campus. It had. Uh, the students were hired and trained remotely uh, online. And then these six students started tweeting and posting on April 1st. It was a campaign that was uh, a, um, an idea of one of the students that, who had been working in the call center and suggested uh, staying in touch and reaching out to young alumni, to students with this hashtag, um, SBU together uh, through social media. So there is only 
one student of the six who's on campus, everyone else is, is remote uh, and, and staying in touch with the community through social media. And he explains in his first post that he's on campus because he's an RA and working with the students who have stayed on campus. The other five are all off campus and staying in touch remotely. Uh, and they've had a great response to the campaign. Uh, it was designed to be the cultivation effort for an upcoming fundraising campaign and they are uh, anticipating launching that fundraising campaign within a day or two and feel like they've accomplished what they had hoped to with this, uh, this campaign that the students have participated in. So I hope that answers the question um, about the health and safety, that they are all remote with that one exception. There's also a question about the survey that I quoted near the top of the webinar, and we can um, share this link. It was a survey conducted by BBB Wise Giving Alliances Giving.org. Uh, and again, happy to include the, the link to the report uh, in the, the follow-up to this webinar. Similarly, um, there's a question about the link for the Gusty thank you videos. Um, I'll be sure to, in the, webs, in the um, webinar when this is posted, I'll make sure that the link is on that slide so that you can find it. Um, it was a link that they had provided as samples um, in the bottom of the email about how alumni could potentially uh, uh, form their, their video message back. So I'll send that along and make sure that it's highlighted and you can click on it through the, the, web, the, the PowerPoint slide. They were anticipating receiving a number of messages from the alumni and um, mashing them together to create um, a message of comfort and support for their students. Yes, good point. They were definitely going to take everything together and send one message out. So, so are there any other questions that we have here? Uh, can you please elaborate on the impact of video communication in encouraging people to engage and donate? So what we have seen uh, We've seen a number of studies that reinforce the importance of video as a channel, as a communication channel, that it is more effective than the written word, than the spoken word, than a phone call, than, a, than an email, than a letter. So we encourage uh, our clients and, and um, our and partner organizations to incorporate video as much as possible because it is so powerful. It brings the viewer into, uh, into the space. I mean, we, we couldn't help but feel like we were following the penguin around the aquarium more so than, you know, as, as, as much as that photo of Martin outside the ER is impactful, there's something very different about following the penguin or following any, like being in the aquarium. Uh, so because of it's so much more engaging than uh, an email, than a website, that is the link to donors having much more of a response and taking action, just the very nature of video. That said, we can of course all find videos that are more effective and perhaps less effective in engaging and encouraging donors to donate, but it starts just with the base that video by, by as a channel of communication is more engaging. So I hope that helps answer that question. There's some specific questions about editing software and I am not aware of any of those right now. Um, but if you want to email the BWF at BWF website or .com email itself, we can make sure to have our colleagues um, get back to you with some specific recommendations. Betsy, do you know of anything? Uh, not, not, this is not my area of expertise, but right. Justin uh, Ware, who is our, um, our colleague, certainly does. And so we can get those to you. Uh, I think that's an important resource for organizations to be using this time. For sure. 
So we're coming up on the end here. Are there any other questions that we can help with? Um, kind of paging through here. Um, not seeing many more. Again, this information will be put posted on our res um, resources webpage. Um, you can show it here again. Um, up here, the bwf.com backslash current resources. You can find the client advisories. But this recording will probably be up in the next day or so, um, along with the deck. Uh, and the deck does include some links to the various organizations, websites, and the, and the resources that we, we referenced. If there's something that's not there, please do not hesitate to reach out and we'll make sure to clarify anything that we, we have. Um, so with that, and then finally, we also do have some services that BWF can offer. We're, we're here to partner with you in any way we can, um, small or large, to try to figure out how we can navigate this challenging times and, and keep our organizations um, moving forward. So with that, if there's any other questions, um, I think the question about the donor survey responses again, Betsy, do you want to oh, reference that BB, one why, BBB, three Bs, the three letter Bs, uh, wise giving alliances, give.org. And we will include the link to the survey when we post um, the resources for on our web page in a couple of days following the webinar. Great. And so with that, as we get done here, I um, close out a little bit just to say to thank you all for what you're doing for our community, for your organizations. Um, hopefully the information that we presented today will give you some food for thought in different ways that you might be able to apply that for your own organization and to fulfill the mission that you have, especially during these challenging times. And I wanna thank my colleague Betsy for her time and partnership on getting this together. And uh, we look forward to staying in touch, Betsy. Thank you all for joining us. We certainly wish you the very best as you continue the important work that you're doing in philanthropy and support of your missions. We certainly hope that you're well, that your colleagues are well, and we look forward to seeing you in person on the other side. Be well. Be well. Thank you, everybody.